Singh, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. You know, the government and the Prime Minister had said that this is a move that takes us to the cusp of history. This is an unprecedented historic move and it will reset center state relationships. Let's just look at the jump as far as the, the share of taxes to states are concerned. Previously, it used to be about 1 to 2 percent, and this is now a quantum or a significant jump of about 10 percent. Uh, how significant is this going to be from a point of view of pump priming the economy? Because now state governments will not just get more money, they will also have a far greater say in how to spend this money. Well, I think that this is really a, a far-reaching report. And I think the Prime Minister has been audacious in fully implementing what he believes, namely cooperative federalism, uh, namely assigning to the states the more important obligation, namely moving away from the colonial belief that, um, you know, the white man's burden or the burden that the center knows what is best for the states, uh, having one size fits all. So I think by a combination of all this, by accepting this audacious recommendation of the Finance Commission in giving 40% instead of 32%, mm. which was there earlier, a huge devolution of extra resources to the states, and giving the states the latitude and the flexibility to spend it on projects and on schemes which suit their local needs and which meets their priorities. So I think this is fiscal federalism in operation in a very, very significant way. A quantum shift from an earlier period when the, a lot of the devolution took place sure. through centrally sponsored schemes and schemes which really were uh, settled to the predilections and to the policy preferences of the central government. This is a giant step towards actual fiscal federalism in operation. You're saying it's a you're saying it's a giant step towards fiscal federalism, sir. But let's uh, try and understand the implications of accepting these audacious recommendations, as you call them. The finance ministry has said that by accepting these recommendations, proportion, proportionately, the centre's fiscal space will be reduced. What are the implications as far as the centre's fiscal space are concerned on account of these recommendations? Well, I think the central government, in order to meet its fiscal consolidation target of 4.1 percent this year, and perhaps a lower target next year of 3.7 or 3.5 for the next year, has an additional challenge, namely that they have to garner additional resources, and that additional resource will largely come from growth, from enhanced tax buoyancy, and from much better total factor productivity in terms of managing the resources better, in terms of much deeper, uh, much deeper disinvestment program than they have contemplated. So I do not think that it is the central government's intention to cut down on its priority areas of spending or to in any way cut down or curtail its non-planned expenditure. So I think they, they are accepting the challenge of raising the additional resources with, through growth and other measures which will enable them to perform the obligations which they have enjoined upon themselves. So I think this is a win-win situation. The central government okay, no doubt faces you know, new challenges, but the states have sure. time to celebrate this extra largest. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Singh, the 14th Finance Commission has recommended that the Finance Ministry and the government stick to the fiscal consolidation roadmap of 3.6% for the fiscal deficit target next year and 3% uh, beyond that. But uh, there's a lot of talk on whether 36 can be 3.8 and at this point in time, perhaps we need more government spending on infrastructure, for instance, to pump prime the economy because private sector investment hasn't kicked in just yet and we need the government to signal a turnaround as far as the economy is concerned. Do you believe that there is a case for perhaps a small slippage in the fiscal deficit or do you believe that that 3.6 percent number should be sacrosanct? Well frankly when it comes to hard macroeconomics uh, nothing is written in stone and uh, nothing is something which is unshakable but I do believe that macroeconomic stabilization and a commitment to a path of fiscal consolidation is central to the growth program which government has in mind. So I think that the audacious challenge of meeting the 4.1% fiscal target this year and mm. moving on to 3.7 or 3.6% fiscal deficit target for next year is something that the government's fiscal roadmap would, I believe, articulate. Although I must say that I personally believe that we need to have a fiscal deficit target which is cyclically adjusted. 
that finance okay. ministers could take on a target for three years and reach a terminal point at the end of the three years, but have some room for flexibility during the path of fiscal consolidation taking place. But fiscal consolidation must remain a centerpiece of growth and macroeconomic stabilization policy. Sir, the countdown to the budget has begun and you were talking about the challenge that the centre will uh, need to face as far as mobilising revenues are concerned. Beyond um, even more aggressive disinvestment target, what are the other ideas that you would like to see this government take forward in terms of revenue mobilisation? Imaginative ways of doing it. I believe that the responses to the spectrum auction are likely to be quite robust. Uh, I think that the disinvestment programmes uh, uh, outcomes are likely to be quite robust. I mean, although the gains from the coal auction will largely go to the, will substantially go to the states, there are other, other programs that they have in mind. For instance, I think on recapitalization of banks, I think there are many banks where I think that they can come down up to the stipulated 51% and being able to garner resources, thereby freeing up more fiscal space hmm. instead of using up money which they require for a recapitalization consistent with meeting the requirements of the Basel III norms. So I think there are many innovative ways of raising resources and that is the challenge which I said of the central government garnering the resources necessary consequent upon accepting this audacious recommendation of the 14th Finance Commission. I come back again, sir, to the budget because, you know, at this point in time, the expectation is that the finance minister has been blessed with a better macroeconomic situation, certainly on account of crude prices coming off so sharply. And he so does have a little bit more room, uh, more bigger room to maneuver as far as the fiscal is concerned. Uh, in terms of big, bold ideas, because that's what industry and the markets and, of course, foreign investors are looking for. What to your mind would qualify as a big, bold budget? What are the measures that would qualify or make this a big, bold budget? But frankly, I think that at the end of the day, I should ask me, budgets are as much about arithmetic as about the roadmap of structural changes. On the arithmetic, as I said, the centerpiece must be the path of fiscal consolidation, which means better management of expenditure, which means not doing away with subsidies, but targeting the subsidies much better, which the government is doing through direct cash transfer program and ensuring that the beneficiaries get the subsidy. Government has no intention of winding up the subsidies, but has every yeah. intention of seeing that the farmers and the really poor do get receive the benefit to direct cash transfer in terms of a rationalization of its expenditure program. Now that this huge amount of additional resources are going to the states through the 14th Finance Commission on rationalizing many of the other transfers through centrally sponsored schemes which are going to the states. So I think that will remain an important centerpiece. On taxation, I believe, that the big idea, of course, is a firmer timeline for implementation of the GST to which the industry is looking forward to. On direct, on direct taxes, I do believe that there is room for uh, somewhat moderating the direct taxes. In any case, a commitment yeah. of being able to align our direct tax rates to the average Asian emerging market tax rates, as we had done it in the case of some tariffs uh, several years ago. And in terms of, of course, allaying any investor suspicions on an over-adventurous and an aggressive attitude of the tax department on transfer pricing, on profit sharing, on base yeah. erosion, on the application of GAR and on retrospective taxation. Allaying those suspicions of investors will, I think, rekindle hope and rekindle the urge to invest. My final question to you, Mr. Singh, you know, because uh, the government has been talking about Make in India and we're positioning this budget as the Make in India budget specifically to boost manufacturing. Do you believe that we will see specific uh, uh, measures being taken by this government, for instance, a lower levy or a differential rate of match to boost infrastructure and manufacturing? Do you believe that that is the path that the government and the finance minister ought to take to make Make in India a reality? Well, I, I'm almost, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm quite confident that the Make in India program, which is one of government's very high priority program, will receive a combination of uh, uh, fiscal and uh, monetary uh, 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 kind of incentives to really make it into uh, a tangible progress in the coming future. It can take many innovative forms. It can take not only in terms of specific tax breaks under Section 35 AD, 
which uh, gives you a kind of a tax relief or, uh, in terms of various kinds of activities. It also will require uh, the availability of, of credit on uh, huh. much more uh, uh, in a manner which is uh, far easier than has been. It, of course, also necessary for the ease of business to be vastly improved in terms of enforcement of contracts, in terms of some of the other changes in labor laws and other regulatory I'm environments. I'm sorry to interrupt so you, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just, want to, I just want to pick up on those two points. So you're saying you do believe that the budget will address both those issues, taxation incentives for infrastructure and manufacturing, as well as a lower rate of credit, so perhaps some kind of interest subvention for specifically the manufacturing sector. You believe the budget will address those two issues? I do not think that the budget uh, should uh, interfere in the credit policy because I think that that's something which is in the domain of the Reserve Bank. But easier access to credit is vastly different than lowering the cost of credit. And in terms of the taxation policy, make the taxation policies a, a little more friendly in terms of preferred areas of economic activity. These are kind <coughs> of ideas which I'm sure the Finance Minister will be toying with or the options which would be weighing with him. All right, Mr. Singh, it's always a pleasure speaking with you, sir. Let's see if uh, indeed the budget delivers on some of the issues that you've raised here today. Thanks very much for your time and for joining us here on CNBC TV well, 18. Well, on that well, note, see you, Shireen, on the budget day. See you, see on, the you budget sir, day. on the budget day on CNBC TV 18. Thank you very much for joining us.